The doctor is in. What your brain wants to remember. If you could have a conversation with your brain, it would tell you that its prime directive is your survival. The problem with this is that your operating system is antiquated. It developed long before skyscrapers, mathematics, computers, and technology in general. Your OS remains pretty much the same as a caveman's. It was not built to calculate escape velocities for satellites or to memorize pi. This is what your brain grew up on and this is what your brain likes to recall. Paths and interconnections to paths. Finding your way home was critical to survival, as was noting where watering holes and food sources you came across were. And because we physically can only walk on one path at a time, our brains like information which is sequential and interrelated. One thing leading to the next thing. One path to the next path. Realization number two. Take a look at your brain. The optical center at the back there takes up the lion's share of your skull. In other words, visual information is dominant. Take a look at the sliver left over for auditory information and smell. So the more you can encode information into optics, the better your chances of recall. Now, returning to your brain and remembering pathways, consider some of the other things your brain would want to remember on your path through the jungle or forest that would increase your survival. Information which is unusual. If you suddenly see a polka dot animal on your walk, your brain doesn't know if this is a foe, friend, or food. It will commit that to memory for later investigation. Anything rude, naughty, or vulgar. Procreation is essential to species survival, so if you see a possible mate on your way, your brain stores that too. Exaggeration is another dead ringer for recall. If walking a new path you encounter the biggest tree you've ever seen, your brain will use that as a landmark to remember. So any information that stands out stays in. And if it bleeds, it leads in your brain's data banks. If the boogeyman or a bear jumps out at you as you forage, your brain will mark that spot forever. Also, associations between things stick. The first time a caveman notes buzzing beads near to honey, they'll expect honey the next time they hear a cluster of bees. Of course, they'll also remember being stung. And perhaps a crowning achievement of the caveman brain is the ability to learn from other cavemen and cavewomen. If you were attacked by a swarm of bees over there yesterday, your comrades can learn vicariously from your related experience. Hence, our brains love stories. You will see all of these elements we've just discussed packed into all of the memorization techniques coming up. The memory palace used by ancients were their modern equivalent to walking a path through a forest or jungle. Your brain is actually very good at recalling these types of information. In other words, the better you can take abstract modern information, and re-encode it into the caveman format your brain finds palatable, the faster you will be able to remember and the more capacious your memory will be. So there's the theory. Next, we'll put it into practice through a series of prescriptions for memorization, reading, and note-taking. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now. If you found this video helpful, support us by sharing it with all of your friends and throw us a like below. You're a star. Cheers and cheerio.